Make a date with Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markway at 6 a.m. from Monday to Saturday on Graphic Online via Facebook and YouTube as he expounds on matters of faith. Graphic Online, truth and accuracy every day. Hello, this is Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Marquis of Living Streams International, bringing you matters of faith with Graphic Online. This morning, I'd like to capture my thoughts with beta transactions. Beta transactions. Now, now uh, in Luke chapter 9, still on Luke chapter 9, there's a very powerful story over there of Jesus going to the Mount of Trans Transfiguration with his three disciples, Peter, James, and John. And the Bible says, now as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance changed. And then he had a divine visitation. He had a heavenly visitation. And guess who came to town? Oh, I would love for those people to come visit me. Moses and Elijah. Now, I'm very, very interested, you know. Now, Moses and Elijah came. And that must have been a very serious uh, transaction. But guess what? Moses standing for the law. And Elijah standing for the prophets. Now, first of all, I am I am intrigued by the fact that, I mean, Moses I can understand, but Elijah will live a very short life history, short lifespan. And he didn't last too long on the scene, on the scenario. He just came and just like that. He appeared and just disappeared. But there were people like Isaiah. There were people like like um, like Ezekiel. There were people like Jeremiah. There were people like Daniel. I mean, there were people like. Hosea, Habakkuk, you know, uh, Zephaniah, Zechariah, Nahum, and, uh, and all, those, all those people. Now, why particular uh, Moses and Elijah? And I was very, very, I'm saying, ah, but what's, what's the whole point? I mean, wh why those two people? Because the people to me, I felt were greater than Elijah. In fact, Elijah, I was a bit disappointed with him. Because he can call down fire, and after the fire falls, a woman speaks and he runs away. He got, he's got his tail between his legs. He's, he's running for, for dear life. That is Elijah for you. Moses, I'm not too... Well, he tried, he tried. You get it? I mean, Moses also had his imperfections. But the Bible said God sent Moses and Elijah and for them to come and talk to Jesus. Now, here's the thing. Those two were fathers. They were father figures. That means their world was not just them. They transcended their day to raise up sons who will pick up mantles after them. They disciple people. They passed on mantles. Moses, Joshua. Elijah, Elisha. So those people raised up sons. You remember, um, Elijah said, my father, my father, the chariots of Israel and the horsemen thereof. So Moses and Eli Elijah raised sons. That means they saw into the next generation. They saw that whatever good thing that God was doing in their life must transcend their day. It must live beyond them. And so they raised up people to carry the mantle. They spent time with people, discipling people, spending time with people to teach them and raise them up beyond where they were. And that those people would go beyond so that if Moses cannot take the people into the promised land, and Joshua can take the people into the promised land. If Elijah cannot deal with the Jezebel and the Ahab, then Jehu, Hazel, and Elisha will deal with him. So they all raised the people who were going to take up after them. So the first question is, who are we raising? But that's, that's even just, uh, that's another, that we, we'll call it uh, Jara, we'll call it uh, surplus. But here's the main thing. Moses and Elijah came to town, and the Bible said, I, I, I was very excited. Now Moses and Elijah, they're here. But then guess what they came to do? They came to speak to Jesus about his disease. They came to talk to Jesus about his death. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I mean, they have, they have come from heaven or they've come from wherever they are coming from to come and talk to you about something bitter that was going to take place in your tomorrow. So it's not every... Sometimes people say, oh God, he, he, when he comes, he only paints pictures of the rosy. No, he doesn't always paint pictures of the rosy. Sometimes he also comes to show us certain bitter cups we are going to drink, certain unpleasantries we are going to face, certain discomforts we are going to experience. And the Bible says they came to speak to him about his disease about his death and what was it they were coming to talk to him about and for me that's a very very important thing 
they came to talk to him that things are not going to be uh, a day is going to come where things are not going to be easy a day is going to come where things are going to be very very sad there's going to come a time when boy you, you're going to have real 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 i mean something that is that is mortifying something that is whew, fearful something that is that is painful they came to speak to him about his disease they came to forewarn him they came to prepare him for that which was about to happen and you know what hmm. so sometimes there are some transactions that god brings into our lives there are some powerful things that happens to us guess what the heavens were i mean the, he was transfigured his clothes his raiment i mean glorious event moses and this thing but it was all leading to messages about his death sometimes it's not always when god comes to town that we're going to be shouting and screaming and waving our hands but sometimes he comes to prepare us for the bitter days ahead sometimes there are some divine visitations that come to strengthen us for the bitter days ahead and i hope that i have not alarmed you or made you uncomfortable but that's a stark reality see you later